What's going on hikers? In today's video, we are talking about how to lighten your load in your backpack. Maybe for cheap, maybe for free. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. That's all we pretty much do here. I will start by saying, if you wanna brag about how light your backpack is, that's fine. You can do that in the comments, but it's gonna fall on deaf ears. What would be better is if you could actually give some tips and some help on other ways to lighten your backpack. Cause I don't think that we need this divide between ultra light and ultra heavy and anywhere in between. But let's start with some of the tips of how can you lighten your load. Number one, I would say it's overly simplified and I'm not trying to make anybody angry, but just bring less stuff. Now don't worry, I do have a strategy for you. Here's what I do. Whenever I first started backpacking, I made a list of everything I brought. And then whenever I got home, I just marked off the things that I didn't use. And I did that a few times. And before you knew it, I actually had a list of all the stuff I knew I was gonna use. Now that doesn't mean you don't bring some extra stuff. That's fine too, but it is a good way to eliminate things that you're bringing with you, but not actually putting to work in the backcountry. Number two, one of the heaviest things that you can use on trail is food. Now, I want you to figure out how much food you need for yourself. Um, so don't take this the wrong way, but personally, I always bring too much food. And then when I get home, I still have like a pound, pound and a half of food left for a weekend trip. And I'm like, <laughs> I carry this for 20, 30 miles for no reason. So I would suggest uh, bringing less food if you notice that you're bringing too much. And then secondly, maybe try out some different foods. Uh, maybe bring some of those freeze dried meals and see if you like them. Or maybe eat oatmeal for breakfast or you know whatever it is that's gonna weigh less, but you can pack as many calories as possible in. Number three, agua, H2O, water. Whatever you wanna call it, you're gonna need it on trail. The question is, how much? I would never ask for you to not bring water, but I do want you to evaluate something for me. Water weighs 2.2 pounds per liter. So that means if you're carrying two liters at all the time, you're literally adding almost four and a half pounds of just weight to your backpack. So here's what I do. If I know I'm gonna be, I have my route planned out, okay? So I know I'm gonna be near rivers, I'm gonna be walking along the creek for five miles or whatever, I'm gonna be in the bottoms, I'm gonna be where a lot of water is because I've already pre-planned it and I know. I'll just carry a liter. Now if I'm backpacking in the desert and I have to carry four liters, that's what I'm gonna to have to do, but you need to evaluate your circumstances. Where are you? How much water will you need? But make sure that you drink plenty of it. Don't use this as an excuse to not drink enough water. I highly advocate prehydrating before your trip and then make sure you're taking electrolytes and then heavily hydrating once you get home. Number four, I would suggest splitting weight. And what I mean by that is, if you're going with somebody, maybe it's you and a friend, maybe it's you and your spouse or your significant other, if there's pieces of gear that you can split the weight on, then I would try it out and see if it works for you. Now it may not, maybe you want your own stuff and that's fine too. And I got more tips for you coming in just a second, but I'll give you a couple examples of things you can split the weight on. When my wife and I go backpacking together, normally we take a, a big three-person tent. It's called a North Face Tri-Arch 3. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it above. Uh, I did a little overview on it. Now we'll split that weight up. For instance, I will take maybe the rain fly and the stakes and the tent poles. And then she can take the body and the footprint for the tent or however we can divide up the weight most evenly. And then another thing that we can split the weight on is we can carry one stove and one fuel container and maybe even one cook pot and we can eat or carry separate cook pots and you know we could cook two different things and kind of split a meal if you will another thing you can split the weight on is all your pieces that go to your filtering set like i like to bring an extra bladder i bring my filter i bring couplings sometimes i'll do gravity fed so I would suggest also trying splitting up the weight of all your kind of filter in its ditty bag, that kind of thing. Number five. Now this one, if you do it right, can be cheap as long as you're doing it as you go. Here's what I mean by that. I like to upgrade my gear 
And yeah, you could spend a bunch of money and upgrade all your gear and get the lightest things possible. But I don't know about you, but the last time I checked my banking account, it didn't have a bunch of big fat numbers that said, go upgrade your gear. Mine says, hey, <laughs> maybe upgrade your backpack once a year or every other year. It says, if you want a new, if you want a new quilt instead of a sleeping bag, you better start saving $50 a month and upgrade once you have saved enough money to buy that. So if you want to upgrade your gear and get lighter and lighter gear, I would first start with budget gear and then see what you like, see what you don't like about it. Then start saving up your money slowly, put back a little at a time. And then uh, once you wanna make a big purchase and you're sure of exactly what you want, you've done all your research, you've actually had some experiences with the pieces of gear and you're like, I don't like that feature or I don't need that or I wish the gear had this. Then you can actually make an educated purchase and upgrade that gear instead of just dumping a bunch of money on gear you don't know if you'll like or you don't like. Now if you've already done that, Facebook Marketplace is a great place to resell that gear uh, along with eBay. So it may cost you a little bit but you know you can still upgrade. Number six, let's talk stoves. I recently did a video on this stove which is the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. And this fuel canister is just ISO butane propane mix. Now together, and this is kind of a heavy stove, those weigh 300 grams, give or take, which I think is a little over 10 ounces. Here's an alternative for you. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to each. This is an alcohol stove. This one's made out of a, a beer can. You can make one out of potted meat or you can make one out of cat food. Those are kind of the same thing if we're being honest, ew. And then this is a bottle of paint thinner that you can buy at any Walmart or you know local box store. Together, and this has a lot of boils right here. Together, this is just over 200 grams. Now, once you get the hang of alcohol stoves, you can actually take exactly the amount of fuel that you're gonna need for the trip. I haven't quite got the hang of it yet because I don't take it very often, but if I'm going on a trip and I really want to save weight, I'll leave that heavy stove at home. Now, some of the sacrifices are like my boil time is slower and uh, I can also knock over the alcohol um, while you know the stove is lit. That could be dangerous, but uh, with all things said, it is a great way to save weight on the trail. Number seven. Sometimes I will substitute out my mid layer. Now, if you're not familiar with the mid layer, that is basically the layer that you will put on top of your base layer, which for me is like an athletic t-shirt, something dry fit that um, will get rid of moisture quickly if it's wet. Now, what I do is I will wear my t-shirt, and then if I don't bring the fleece, weather permitting, then I will put on my rain jacket if I'm cold, or maybe a windbreaker if that's what I'm bringing. And then if I'm really cold and maybe I'm at camp, I will put on my puffy and then I'll put my rain jacket over top of that. And that gets rid of my fleece, which, you know, weighs quite a bit. Clothing is pretty heavy. Now, my disclaimer, please don't take this advice as I don't need a mid layer. You need to be prepared for whatever the weather and temperatures are gonna be for where you're going. So make sure you do your due diligence and your research for the trip that you're going on. Look what I got, luxury items. I got a chair, I got a sit pad. I got a hang time hook that hangs from your ridge line so that you can lay there and watch movies on your phone. I'll link it below, I actually love it. Sometimes I don't bring those things. Sometimes I don't even bring camp shoes. Like when I was in Colorado backpacking at 13,000 feet, my body is just not prepared for those kind of altitudes and I knew it was gonna be hard on me. So I left a lot of those things at home and what I sacrificed in luxury on the trail and at camp, it, it really did lighten my load and made my life a lot easier while I was backpacking, you know, eight miles in the Colorado Rockies and I couldn't get my breath. So maybe leave a couple of the luxury items at home. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give me one of these, comment below and give us some more tips. Help out your fellow backpackers and subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. We'll see you in the next video.